Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to the third episode in which we're playing as everyone's favorite painful nation, I the Iberian Union, but Jadim's new job. Another letter had arrived in the mail, carrying an opportunity just as lucrative as the first. Today, Jadim had the wisdom to simply set it aside, finishing his breakfast before breaking into the plots and schemes. What were they going to do, shoot him for a few minutes to delay? The clinking of silverware was music to his ears, just as the sensation of warm food was music to his mouth. Once he finally had the hands to open the letter, Jardim plucked the envelope open with a fingernail and then scanned that page. A tent of anticipation turned to curiosity, and from there to excitement all in the space of a paragraph, as Jardim found himself unable to suppress a laugh, a brand new job, especially for him. As soon as he was finished with his tenure in Algeria, even better, they were going to pay him for the work he wasn't doing yet. Today was going to be a good day, he was already sure. Meanwhile, back in Iberia proper, there was no laughing for the top brass. Jardim was going to join, the, uh, uh, to join found the entire affair, much less amusing. Perhaps it was jealousy, maybe resentment, even contempt, but not matter where it was coming from, for the end result was the same. Quite a few were unhappy that with a new promotion, not least because they, he wasn't even out of Africa yet. All this for a strip of desert. The Santa Maria hijacked by pro-democracy activists. Franco and Salazar sit in a secluded briefing room, accompanied by admirals and colonels of the Iberian Navy. The mood within is grim, and as an, as an, as an admiral begins the briefing, Cadullos, the three days ago at 1100 hours, an Iberian passenger ship known as the Santa Maria departed from the port in Caracas. Within two hours of her departure, contact was temporarily lost. Today, 1400 hours, we received a mini key from Castries, detailing their discoveries around the vessel. This morning, the Santa Maria temporarily docked in St. Lucia, offloading 400 crewmen for medical attention before quickly departing once again. As the crewmen spoke only Portuguese, it could not until after the departure of the Santa Maria that locals, uh, authorities could even appropriate a certain situation aboard. Cadillos! The Santa Maria and her 900 occupants, including American and other foreign nationals, are currently held hostage by approximately two dozen pro-democracy terrorists. The leader of the terrorists is said to be Enrique Galveo. However, we're currently attempting to confirm these claims. A civilian maritime advisory board has already been issued, however. Our naval forces are not yet ready to conduct a Caribbean search. The room descends into an eerie silence as the Cadillos observe the gravity of the situation quickly. Franco chimes in, if there are Americans being held hostage by the sheriffs, we must contact the American government immediately. They will not stand for this, exclaims Franco. No, we should not draw attention to these terrorists. Galveo has received enough attention for his treasonous actions. He should not receive any further recognition, assaults our tarts. The two descended, uh, the two descended into a fiery argument as the rest of the room awkwardly looks on. We can do nothing. There are Americans aboard. Ask the U.S. for help. Expand reformism. Meetings with the ENI officials. The best part of guarding any kind of affluent figure, the bodyguard reflected, was the secrets. Um, actually, I heard this one earlier, so uh, if you want to do this again, please go ahead. Come on, we're going to lunch. Pretty good. I'm oh, doing secret meetings, so if you want to do this again, please go ahead. Talk about the talks. As the talks have finally died down, the discussion now turns what the possible outcome could be. The Iberian political elite back home wait with bated breath for the Italian response to the plan we've worked so hard to secure. Thus far, it feels like things are going somewhere and a deal looks just to be in sight. We've had no definite response, so let's make some of the more worrisome members of the Iberian political society tear their hair out. And the end is down to the Italians, and all we can do now is wait for the response. We uh, won't have to wait long, though, for the decision should have come reasonably sharpish. Let's all hope that these talks were not for naught. And that something good can come out of this whole endeavor. If not, this has been a spectacular waste of time, quite a missed opportunity. Prelimi preliminary meetings. The context in the ENI sorted. Oh, actually, probably should read this one uh, first before the other one, then. That makes more sense. But I have a 64. Jardim stirred his coffee idly, stirring a, spinning a stir around in circles. He had everything he wanted. He could splurge like that now and was merely waiting for a map to show up. Every now and then, he took a few sips of coffee, speeding up his time and wore onto his beat his cooling drink. His cup was already empty when he heard the door click open and just had enough time to set it down before beholding the face of an advisor in that advisor's hand a map. The map, when unrolled, revealed itself to be a map of Oran, just as Jardim had requested. Not any just map, however. It was a survey map of the oil deposits around the city of Oran. There were a few red marks all over the paper where some of the red oil areas had been scribbled over with a red pencil. So many had been marked over, in fact, that Jardim could count them on one hand, plus one that was half-colored. I suspect that you are aware of what kind of map this is. A red-colored deposit means the Italians signed a contract with us for it. He places his finger on the half-colored deposit on the map. Here, we're still working out the details. Looks like it happens, uh, though. So, what are they planning, huh? Why are they so nervous? Think about it. If they didn't have something to hide, they'd be more, more deals, right? The Jardim slaps a hand on the map, looking up at the man who brought it him. I think our olive branch is withering. Preliminary meetings. With the context in the ENI sorted, it may be much easier to come to an equitable agreement with Italy. It's a natural impulse of a man to preserve his gains, and so he'll be less inclined to enter a scenario where they're at risk. The recent deals with the Italian-owned oil company has created those potential gains. If we were to come into conflict, then the lucrative deals, lucrative deals for the black gold would be gone by planting the seed of profit. We've shown the Italians that our objectives are friendship and cooperation. To cement this, the diplomats have been sent into a meeting with the Italian officials, the influence of the company who want to preserve profits, uh, and our show of friendliness, a peaceful solution is in sight. Of course, it will not be an immediate affair, and the true objective of our diplomats for the first few meetings will have to be building trust. Business always finds a way. 
Americans captured Galileo. Reports have, uh, have today arrived from the U.S. Navy that the Santa Maria has been secured. A contingent of the United States Marines aboard, aboard the USS, USS Hermitage were able to successfully board the Santa Maria in the dark early hours of the morning. Seven hijackers were killed, no civilians or crewmen who were hostages upon the ship were harmed. The other 17 hijackers were captured by the U.S. Navy and placed under custody. Among those captured is Enrique Galileo, who surrendered himself to Marine forces once they swiftly stormed the bridge of the ship. The U.S. has already agreed to extradite the Hiberian jackers hijackers to us to be dealt with by our legal system. The Americans, after questioning Galileo, alerted us to his intentions. The intent of the hijacking was to sail the ship to Portugal, where it intended to incite rebellion within Iberia, should he have succeeded. He could have proven a true thorn in our side. Our concerns are not dispelled, however. Well, this is a, one pro-democracy rebel is now in custody. He did not act alone. There are still others within Iberia who would risk their lives to risk or to fight for a democratic cause. We must root them out before they can take hold, of course. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, oh. Algerian Mandate. Misali Hajd. So we're both guaranteeing unofficial Italian settlement. Well, Algerian cross is defused despite rising tensions between Italy and Algeria. Seems like war has been nearly avoided as a representative from both countries met in a peace conference in Palma de Mallorca today. There, a new plan was drafted to create a joint occupation regime in North African country, effectively turning into an Italian Iberian condominium with Misali Hajj, known campaign for peace in Algeria as his nominal head. Despite being painted as a way to preserve the peace, the Algerian man is a very controversial solution to the crisis, as many in the FLN consider it a thinly veiled act of imperialism, and Pierre Noir and other European settlers lament the new mandate will not protect them from native terrorism. But the peace seems to hold on for now, most likely kept together by the lucrative oil deals that have just been approved between Iberia and Italy, a feat of our diplomacy, considerably improved by Iberia's stability. Well, that seems even worse. But you have the old guards, you have the you know, we're stable. Unlock decisions which Salazar attempted to deal with Iberia's foreign policy after the peace. Beautiful, my friends. So I read this earlier, I read this one too. The Constitution states exactly what powers the Council has at their disposal. To choose this will pass new fundamental laws to ensure the Council's power is stable and secure. Scale back military in Ecuador, Guinea. Ah. Sure. Salazar can take a hit. A uh, master of national security, as much as we hate the Germans, many of our government recognize that Albert Speer, should he take power, is least likely to be aggressive with us. It may put a bitter taste in our mouth, but do so, but it might be worth it in the long so. In the long run, aid uh, Speer's faction. Plus, sending over volunteers is an easy way to get rid of ourselves of some dire fascists in our own country. After the peace. Dragging smoke from a cigar. Francisco Franco looked away from the TV screen and passed a shoulder. You look glum today, he said, pausing a moment to puff another ash laden cloud, just like yesterday. The Cadillo offered an inlet a roll to the officer, our office of the occupant. Antonio de Oliveira Salazar swatted away with a glower. Uh, glower. I've been wondering why for a week now, he grumbled, raising with her fist in the air. Salazar continued, then I remember only I gave more than a darn about Algeria and this godforsaken country. Threadbare tendons and brittle bones cracked against varnished hardwood, and the Portuguese strongman cursed as he cradled himself or his self-inflicted injury close to his chest. And I wanted Anadolusians for my morita. Kind of everything in the world, so she set up for a car. Franco turned back to the TV set just in time for the special program ERTI devoted to the armistice and the establishment of the Mandate of Algeria. That newsmen can now present their scripts in moving screens mere moments after the worthwhile stories unfold. It always amazed the old Spaniard whenever he entertained the thought. Same goes with Italians in assistance of the new mandate. Just with a little more trust, they don't like terrorists like anywhere with them we do. What can I do you with Francisco? Requisition a pack of butts and the guardia will have them herded out of the Cortez outside of Cortez by noon. The broadcast drawn on while Francisco considered this reply. Then he ground a cigar into an ashtray, a wrinkle grin on his face. The council might not want their relatives so close to the workplace. A more comparable companionable silence followed the two friends' laughter. Yeah, that seems like we're improving at least. Um let's see. Recognize uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Sure. I'll take whatever we can get for now for political power, even though this looks pretty bad. Ooh, that took a pretty bad hit. Ooh, that's really bad too. Oh, Jesus. I love automatic support weapons. I love guns. If you're an American, you have to love guns. No debate. Ah, uh, double chai spice. Uh, black tea? Oh, actually. More growth. Okay, we fixed the growth. A matter of national security. Oh, the change of fascism goes down. That's not bad. Getting rid of the fascism might be really worth it. Increased reformism. Oh, it seems like this should probably be the route we should do. Um, and now we have a little bit um, it's February now. There's a little bit of manpower. That's not bad. Thoughts and prayers. Huh. Ten of the guns. 
a law of the organic state. In order to ensure that the Iberian Council has a reasonable amount of power and the ability to perform the task that has been entrusted with a new with a new fundamental law of the realm has been passed. The first amendment to the original fundamental laws of Iberia since the late 1940s. This law, at least in writing, gives the Iberian Council several powers, such as the ability to levy federal taxes and issue federal laws with approval of Salazar and Franco. It remains unknown, however, how much power the legislative body will actually be able to exert. Good to keep things legal. Well, somewhat. The new division, Azul. Or get rid of the radicals. I like that one. Word is being run through the corridors and back channels of the government's forming a secret group of military advisors to aid Albert Speer's attempt to restore the Reich. One of the most capable and competent military officers who act coincidentally happen to be all hardline phalangists are recruited through private meetings in order to bring fire to the most trusted aides. Famous old guard general Agustin Munoz Grandes was honored to have been trusted uh, with a special task. He was leaving Madrid on a plane headed for Germany. Sadly, Goring's Lufthansa was a world famous for its capable interceptors, and so we pray for their safety. Sure. Salazar pushes involvement in the South African War. Within the high governmental offices of Madrid, you know the disagreement erupts between the Cadillos. Following the outbreak of the South African War, the German and American spheres have slowed their way behind the factions of the Boer Republic and the Dominion of South Africa, respectively. As the conflict drags on, of course, concerns within Iberia grow that the German backed African powers may soon overrun the Dominion of South Africa, creating a dominance of the German sphere within the Central to South Africa. The United States has grown increasingly involved in the conflict, with the growing American force being committed to the South African War to prop up the Dominican or Dominican Dominion government. Salazar argues to an unconvinced Franco that the Iberian nation would benefit greatly through intervention in South Africa. While the front lines of this conflict are far from home, assistance to the Dominion of South Africa against the Germans and the Boers could provide a barrier to the further expansion of German influence within the African continent. Furthermore, Salazar argues that within the continent right with the rise of new nations, significant favor and influence over a well-established state such as South Africa could provide an essential strategic stepping stone in the expansion and maintenance of Iberian influence globally. The Cadillos have yet to come to the formal agreement required for any official action to take place. Salazar is unrelenting in his proposals, believing firmly in the necessity of Iberian intervention in South Africa. If the evil of the uh, Cadillos is to be moved in his opinion, it likely will not be Salazar. We must act. I will do light in the black because I do want more stability and political power. Spears faction needs soldiers. We have lots of dissidents in our army who have covert or open fascist sympathies, while something a bit too extreme for government's liking, of course. Perhaps we can kill two birds with a single stone by sending over these radicals and cannon fodder. And we mean volunteers for Spear. Uh, they'll be out of the, our hair, and Spear will be great before the support. And Franco strongly agrees with Salazar's South Africa proposal. Following a steadfast assailance of proposals and arguments from Salazar, Cadillo Franco has uh, finally come out to an agreement with his counterpart following the American intervention in the Santa Maria affair where the United States Marines secured the terrorist leader Enrique Galveo, as well as ensuring the safety of 900 hostages, Franco feels indebted to the Americans. He agrees with Salazar that the Americans deserve steadfast support in the South African uh, interventionism, and that Iberia should do all in its capacity to ensure that they do not stand alone in combating German influence in, Af in Africa. Cadiz immediately prepared the necessary measures to commence the planning of the operations. Franco swiftly arranges for emergency meetings with the military high command and Salazar calls for arrangements to be made with the foreign ministry to begin diplomatic engagements with Americans and South Africans concerning the war. The cogs of the Iberian diplomatic machine begin turning. We'll repay the Americans for the favors tenfold. So this one says, strategically placed terrorists will help us pressure the governments we need to work with us. Give them political power, but worse than the businessman's opinion of Salazar, which is also okay with me, but I will not decrease growth. There's no way we can afford that. To emphasize our colonialism on the world stage. Uh, our overseas uh, provinces are natural extensions of Iberia. We shall make it clear that people are treated well. Well, well enough. Thoughts and prayers. Send over guns. The new divisions. Oh, the new division, Azul. Even after many has more vocal members left for Germany and the old shirts, the old shirts still hold significant influ influence in our union, especially among the armed forces. We should expand the scale of our volunteer program, creating a new form of the division Azul, much cherished in the Falange lore. The old guard received the columns with enthusiasm, eager to provide their prove their worth, and ensure the prestige they once had, as well many young recruits who grew up hearing their father's war stories now seek their own baptism by fire. They marched their way through the port of Bilbao, with added security as the AAS tagged the city as a hotbed of ETA activity, where they sing Cara al Sol and kiss their wives one last time before they embark on what hopefully will be a one-way trip. The U.S. welcome our hope in Africa. Following a meeting with American President Richard Nixon, Ambassador to the United States, has reported back to the Foreign Ministry in the Madrid, the American response. The Americans have, and quite jubilantly, accepted our offer of support in South Africa and will welcome our force in addition to their leaders in this conflict. And for the support of our efforts, the Americans have applied extensive logistical assistance to commence our operations in the region to ensure a smooth transitional launch. Salazar has proven to be quite a late following this news. Already, thousands of Portuguese soldiers were poised for deployment to South Africa. As thousands more conduct additional training to prepare for the new future deployments, many of the public remain skeptical, however, of the significance of such a conflict. People question why Iberian men must be sent to perish in a conflict thousands of miles away over a country with no true ties to Iberia. Regardless of skepticism, Salazar has Portuguese war machine mobilizing as much as feasible as the countdown to Iberian operations of the South Africa begins. Excellent. Oh, Iberia completes a shadow of mutual benefit. So, what we want to do? I'm glad we got all that done. Over here on the right. Uh, complete the focus first, and then we'll click on this one, and then we'll be good. There we go. Excellent. Yes. Ah, so we have all this stuff unlocked too now. Music concerts. 
Green berets and basal. Bonus for ships. Increase the liquid reserve by 0.2 billion. Ooh! Air R M E X B. Three more volunteers. Um let's see this one too. Swaying people to the side, huh? Bureaucrats to the side. Bureaucrats are fully solid are aligned. Intellectuals, huh? Church. Let's start with the bishops. I don't mind doing all of this stuff though. More music concerts? Release Salton? The National Women's Movement has never ceased to be a great boon to Iberia. They are of upsetting moral character, making very good care workers and frequent volunteers. All we need to do so is, to, uh, is ask, and they'll be willing to help. And more often than not, have someone be able to have someone able to do what is needed. I said that a good song can lighten even the darkest heart, and there are many times hearts in the wartime. The American soldier stationed in South Africa will most likely appreciate someone to sing for them and not and for a sweet melody to raise their spirits. The women's movement has many talented singers in it, and they can be sent to Africa to play for the American troops. The concert will be funded by us fully, and they're sure to appreciate what we can do for them. Salazar enters a sanctuary of Fatima. It was a crisp, clear morning in the Portuguese municipality of Orem. The white marble running all around the sanctuary of Fatima reflected the morning sun's brilliance, bathed in the plaza and warmth and the light. As usual, Salazar's modest motorcade arrived early, and the Cadillo of Portugal found himself with time to burn before his appointment with the Portuguese bishops. Waving off his bodyguards to permit them a cigarette break, Salazar squinted up at a gold plated cross atop the spire of the central cathedral. He pondered how to go about his discussion with the bishops. It been some time since he dealt with the clergy directly, despite their major role in the Estado Novo. Would there be simple, honest men like the ordinary priest he'd known growing up, or illustrious and regal figures, representative of the church's wealth and power? What approach would be best to speak to them and win them over? Formation of the natural spirit. Like Iber itself, the Iberian family is indivisible. It's the natural unit from which Iberian society is built. Like law and religion, the Iberian family is inviolable. Invi Always must be, it must be honored, never can be corrupted. Fourteen-year-old Beatrice studied for tomorrow's exam. That can all be all right, can it? Beatrice thought. The large bruise on her thigh bar hardly felt like it was the center of her family's strength. Like a diamond, the Iberian family is indestructible. Nothing can break the familial bond between husband and wife, between father and son. Was mom's black eye meant to protect that bond? If a child could pass formation of the national spirit, why then was it so difficult for her to understand what her textbook was telling her? What do you mean by inviolable or honor or indestructible? Indeed, the very vows of Iberia enshrined in his families. Our very destiny is laid out by our families, working as a singular entity in service of God and the nation. That which would threaten the Iberian family via divorce, adultery, homosexuality, threaten the Iberian nation itself just as much as communism, anarchism, and terrorism. Perhaps Dad did what he did out of love. Was that what the textbook was saying? Beatrice had never thought it was that way before, whether she really believed it or not. The thought of her father, as a man who loved his family deep in his, his heart, brought her some comfort. Comfortable. Enough, at least, at least that she could. Rest for tomorrow's exam. Education for, education for our beers, future families. Bishops warm up to Salazar, of course. I had no idea, Senor Salazar, Bishop and and Salimo said, clearly impressed. You to be so personally invested in the church at such a young age it was even was rare even among my own generation. Though you surely were called by God to your vocation, I feel the church is diminished simply by its inability to count you among its servants. If that wasn't the sign of successfully charming his way into the confidence of some of the most influential men in Iberia, Salazar didn't know what was. Despite his age, the chauffeur noticed a confident energy in the Caduio as he took his seat in the back of the limousine and opened up some light reading. The bishops, too, parted ways with Salazar, feeling decidedly more relaxed about dealing with the Cadillos in future. Franco had been so coarse, despite his faith and good intentions. Their own quiet, charismatic, charismatic countryman was far more agreeable and clearly a reliable brother in Christ. A gorgeous smile seemed to answer far more of their questions than a stack of government of pamphlets. Salazar clearly gleaned the thrust of the church. Naval exercises, perhaps. The American Navy is very adaptable what they do. It's only logical for willpower to have a great sailing force and able to dominate the waters. Since American relations seem to be improving, it may be possible they would be willing to participate in a few mutually beneficial programs. Auto tech would bring them around, it would be a small amount of persuasion, and then some competent uh, scheduling. There's no secret that the Iberians and American naval fleets have a world difference between them, with different doctrines, tactics, and officers all creating a vast gap between the two. Opposites and striking the contrast of naval styles could prove very helpful to this end. Arrangements will be made for joint naval exercise, which will prove invaluable in providing intelligence to better improve our strategies, of course. New Division Azul? Oh, yes, please. Host expensive banquets foreign leaders. These seemingly uh, superfluous expenses are, in fact, some of the greatest investments that can be made. He is done. Not quite 1965. Lisa Tomo. Ah, so Tomo, one of the only Portuguese colonies that resist German encouragement on a stable and pleasant island. The island is a darling of Portugal, not for its beauty, but for its importance. Those first colonists served as a waypoint in the long and treacherous journey to India. <clears throat> Even though it has been centuries since then, and decades since the last time the island was necessary, it is now without use. The island is in a location of a immense technical value, able to serve as a dock for ships and a point across which to filter supplies. It was for these reasons that Americans wanted to use it. As a suggestion of goodwill, we can effectively run out the island to them and allow them to use it as they please, so long as it is given back to us in fair shape. As it so happens, conveniently, that a fair sum of money can be made off the deal, too. Provide the maps. 
The Germans took Portuguese colonies from their original owners, ripping out pride and soul of half the Union as nothing short of an act of cruelty. Worst of all were the retornados, who were forced to flee their homelands to escape the tyranny that would affect them. The heart-wrenching stories of those who have truly lost everything have made a very strong case for the government. Therefore, it's about time they got their revenge. If the Portuguese should not have it, then the Germans assuredly won't either. Even though they certainly took everything, there's something very important they failed to take. We saw the map of assets around Angola, and it's unlikely that Germany has modified anything. It would be a shame if that map would be given to the Americans so that they could disable the infrastructure they find when they find necessary. They'll come all the same, and God be with anyone it does. Oh boy. Uh, let's see. Green Berets and Bissau? Well, we'll read that very soon. The core parts of various spear were ripped by, from us by the Germans. It will be made abundantly clear that they were ours. <coughs> Africa's a vast place with many different environments. What no one will tell you is that these environments were less different than one would think. And there are a lot of crossover between them. For example, there are many skills you can learn in one place that you can use in, 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 of in another. It's only logical that the Americans would appreciate learning some skills for the time in South Africa. We'll open up Guinea Bissau to the U.S. military, and particularly invite their special forces to come and train in the area. They can use the practice to fight better in the hostile environments of Africa, where Guinea can provide a valuable infrastructure to it. Yes, sir. Helped out slightly. Deficit is getting worse. How's getting worse? I should just delete the navy. Social expenditures are just so much. My God. Cancionero de do Niasa. The mission of the Portuguese in Angola, their divinely ordained duty, was to civilize people there. Since the Portuguese were chased away by the Nazis, the job was left only half finished. Yet still, the history of the Portuguese colonialism in the region is something that can be used to our advantage. One of the first things the settlers did was teach inhabitants Portuguese in order to better communicate with the natives. Portuguese language is by no means universal, but a significant enough number of Africans in the former colonies know the language to make alternative uh, operations practical. When a deployed force is able to use the power of song and voice to strike fear into the Africans fighting under German command, turning their traditions and customs against them, these operations will harm the morale, allowing the Americans a better chance. Yanks and Sao Toma. The buzzing of helicopters, the whine of or, or jet engines, the unending noise of construction equipment, these sounds once around Sao Toma are now constant for the inhabitants of our island con colony. The ink on the leasing agreement had barely dried before the Americans moved in, of course, as one squad auction now filled to the brim with shipping. <clears throat> uh... With its airport overcrowded with fires and transports, and its infrastructure expanded and improved with a typical American efficiency. Uh, already concerns are being raised by the colonial officers or officials over what impact American money and demands will have the island's societal structure, however. A deal is a deal, and if there's one thing you can always say about Americans, they certainly they aren't bad for business. Yanks don't have do things by halves, do they? Join anti separatist efforts across the world? Nations across the world can have something to learn from in more ways than combating separatism. You betcha. Most fan call I know. Hmm. Not bad. We're getting a more more performance of the academic crisis in 65, 56. Concerning that the socialist beliefs that were taking root in Portuguese universities, the Cadillus implemented uh, something. Uh, restrictions on students' ability to organize on campus, the campus. backfired triggering a sizable anti-government student protest. The anniversary of the first protest has come to known as Students' Day. And once a year, reform-minded Iberians uh, <clears throat> are going to route U.S. Air Force hits the one the armed soccer is going to have. Crap. Oh, huh, whatever. Um, students' Day, once a year, reform-minded Iberian students peacefully protest for greater academic freedom, trusting that their youth and high social status will deter police retaliation. Uh, in the past four years, these protests have become more explicitly anti-government and radical in their demands. The six weeks ago, Cadiz prohibited all students' day events indefinitely. While most would-be protesters catered to their demands, students of the University of Lisbon arranged a massive strike as many as 70% of the students have stopped attending classes and turning in assignments. That, that not only demand the reversal of the students' day ban, but for wider freedom of speech and organization on campus, and anti racially and ideologically motivated restrictions on student admissions. The protests received little attention at first, leading organizers to adopt a more extreme approach, a mass hunger strike. Over 1,000 students filled the UOL's cafeteria in a single largest protest in Portuguese, Portugal since Salazar took office. The protests, the most end, less image uh, is of malnourished students appearing in the press or worse. Both Cadillas favor the obvious uh, option of sending police to detain the students for a few days and suck the life out of the protests. Some reformist advisors fear that this could backfire and lead to more outrage, notably current rector of UOL and former high-ranking administrator Marcelo Cateno. Has argued that most of the students' demands are reasonable, and acceding to these demands would weaken support for the other uh, for the other unacceptably radical proposals. Other advisors buy back that given the protesters an inch will only encourage more radical protests in the future. Ultimately, however, the Cadiz would not stand out of the by as the authority was challenged to send in the police. Bureaucrats, Salazar, oh, Salazar, Franco, Franco, Salazar. We can try that. 
It says 75, but we only lost like 30. Me no understand. Bureaucrats are fully sells our line. Oh. Well, okay then. They're still fully aligned. They're still fully aligned. God dang it. The Ministry of National Education. In a drought to stabilize the Iberian internal divisions and so that the current administration is not politically inert. Uh, oh boy. It's been on the Cadilla Franco. We'll tour various government ministries in order to gain an insight into the workings and uh, current conditions. Some have already labeled this as a pointless and insulting PR move, something to put in the daily tabloids to distract from other more pressing news. Official statements, however, hail the proposed events as a turning point in Iberia's current political and economic fortunes, dismissing the criticism as pointless fear mongering. The early dictator's first visit would be the education ministry. In the run up to the day, lobbyists have been arguing for more funding to increase Iberian standards of education, both in order to help the national economy while providing better employment opportunities and to help the union better compete on the world global stage. Whether Frank will heed their advice only make slight reforms in order to balance the national budget or just ignore them entirely will be seen on the day. Election will be prioritized. Promise to improve the situation somewhat. Worse than the bureaucrats' opinion. Education will be prioritized. Nice. Just keep spending money. Just keep spending. Uh, I might delete. I, might, I don't know if we really need the Navy. That's so much money. We're about to default. I mean, what if we go all the way down here? Um, we might have to do that for now. I mean, honestly, I I, I don't know. Probably going to get worse, but... Catino resigns in solidarity with protesters. The events of recent weeks have dramatically changed the culture of the University of Lisbon. The flame of liberty still burns in Iberia, however, weakly. Reformers academics have been roused to action by the student protests and now seek to continue the struggle for increased freedoms. Uh... Um, Mar Marcelo Catón, a former close associate of Cadillo Salazar and the current dean of the University of Lisbon, has announced his resignation in protest of the government's repression of student expression and academic freedom. Catón is simply a political maverick. In a broad stroke, he is supportive of the ideology and policies espoused by Salazar, but he is also an outspoken pro proponent of sweeping education reform, though he was a prominent member of the Portuguese government during the 1940s. Franco's deep suspicions of Catendo and his intentions led to him being silent upon the establishment of the Union. While well, continues to serve and maintain a regular correspondence with Salazar and serves as one of the advisors in unofficial capacity, he holds no office in his doppel heel anytime soon. Still, as one of the only Portuguese reformers both liked and respected by Salazar, it's not unthinkable that Catendo might one day return to prominence. Will he return to politics? Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Now we lost 70. The Ministry of Agriculture. Franco's uh, grandly advertised tour of the nations of various governments continues as he's preparing to meet the Minister of Agriculture and other top civil servants. Land reform and future of farming are always hot topics during the election cycles, especially in more rural Iberian settings, which resulted in the uh, upcoming meeting tripling newspaper and, and analysis sales. Amongst the concerns of the Spanish Cadillo may not be entirely suited to discussing such matters of state, some are more particularly scathing attacks published by left-wing organizations who see the strong man as a growing tumor wasting away Iberia's societal and economic wealth. The decision made at the meeting, however, could signal a new direction for rural prosperity, which had long been lagging behind urban development. It's not clear yet what will be decided. Agriculture will be improved. Making an entrance. Morocco, a great place of, uh, a place of great significance to the proud Spanish generalissimo. Oh. Uh, if you want about this, please go right ahead. We have much to learn from the brilliant CIA. Um, where began his arduous journey to rescue his beloved nation. Uh, from the grips of communism, yet now the land he once known as the back of his hand, where he once conducted extensive military exercises well this heart of veterans, has greatly changed. It had been over 20 years since his reconquista of Spain, enough time for the German instability and new Iberian wedding to leave its toll. Franco considered that a proud showing in Morocco may approve his legitimacy and reign in any unruly colonial officials, but he also had been, always been a man of simple action, not a bombastic dictator like those two men who had helped him across the Nero Sea. She arrives perhaps quietly and gets straight to the business? Roll the red carpet, avoid the limelight. I just want to be successful. The Ministry of Development. Franco's grandly advertised nation, tour of the nation. Uh, the various ministries continues as he was preparing to meet the Minister of Development and other re relevant state secretaries attached to the department. Road expansion and public works in general are always a good way of improving the national economy and provide jobs for the people, but their downside is, as the name implies, that they need state money to actually happen. Oh, crap. However, due to the promises made to the previous ministries, it seems like a deal. The Cadillo will only have bad news for the minister, as there's not now enough only not enough money for the development ministry, but that some cuts will have to be made if the minister helps to keep the department running. The meeting looks like we will be a very short one, with Franco delivering the bad news and getting out as soon as possible. There may have to be some cuts. Oh boy. Ah, I'm gonna carpet. Oh boy. Oh god dang it. Issue of regional separatism. As the formation of the Iberian Council, it was decided that there should be representatives from the main constituent parts of Iberia, namely Spain and Portugal. However, the concerns that allowing representatives for only two regions would disenfranchise the smaller provinces. There are two options. The Cadillos could ignore the cries for representation and only allow for Spanish and Portuguese representatives. The other solution to the problem would be to accept a few token representatives from the smaller regions such as Catalonia or Galicia. That should hopefully help in calming down separatist elements. 
To made a Portugal the only recognized regions. I split them up, allow the smaller provinces a token province. Gratify the council's powers. Now the council exists and has been given them stated powers, perhaps we should do something to keep them under control. With the option of limiting what they are able to do, or we can just allow them their stated powers. We need to make a decision on this. Meeting with local leaders. Franco's arrival in the North Africa colony has reinvigorated illegal Moroccan elites into pushing for further autonomy while maintaining Liberian suzerainty. The argument for this is simple. Having a puppet state will allow Liberians to have better galvanized resources from the area, whether it be manpower, labor, natural resource extraction. Uh, yet giving any form of a concession to the Africans may be met with a ridicule from European neighbors. Italy in particular could be seen as a sign of weakness and could then push for a strengthened presence in the Med. However, the flustered Spanish strongman is likely to make a decision now. And, oh, and the men before him waiting eagerly for a response. Prestige or decline efficiency. Improve Iberia's ability. This land is Iberian. Now, Shabir actually won here, which I don't think I've seen in, happen for a long time. Now, Hatred has gone too, so just him and Goring. I think Goring might lose. Reform National Socialism. I love National Socialism. I still want to delete the Navy. Meeting the settlers. The Iberian settlers in Morocco met with Franco today in Ceuta. And after Franco delivered a heartwarming and praiseworthy speech, the settlers unceremoniously bombarded a great Castillo with grievances and troubles. Over the course of several hours, it became clear that the settlers were agitating for more subsidies from the Iberian government to lessen the burden on them. They agonized in painstaking detail. The hardships in, that they faced in trying to settle the arid deserts of Morocco from worthless and parched soil and the hindrance of lack of any honest work in the cities. What a place for the strain on the Iberian economy. It may be advisable to promise them more financial support, even if it's just keeping quiet and loyal, either that or to some token an inconsequential gesture to appease them for the remainder of uh, Franco's visits are in order. Chris Funding. Who needed money? Determine illegal political stances. While we don't have to worry about much from those who align with us, there's a danger with allowing certain political ideologies to exist within the council. We have to take, make a decision on liberalism, whether or not we should begin ban those who are aligned with it in the, even the slightest way, airborne nurses. So the Portuguese are without a, a, without a doubt brave. That, or they're just thrill seekers, either way. Their willingness can be put to good use in service of the Americans. Medics are not always on time, or they cannot get to some places easily on land. What makes it worse is that they can't always get where they need to be by air, either, as they would have nowhere to land. The Portuguese airborne nurses have been created to solve that problem, though. They will parachute out of helicopters and other aircrafts at high altitudes and uh, hostile conditions in order to save lives. Through thick and thin, no matter the risk, it's here that the bravest will shine, and those that are in for a throw will get exactly what they want. They'll be like angels from heaven, come to bring salvation to those who need. Boots on the ground. At times come, recent developments in Colombia colluded to provide us a way, or provide us a window, actually, in devolving ourselves in war already. There have been talks with the chosen side's leadership to begin arranging steady lines of communication. We pledge, or are preparing to pledge, diplomatic logistic. Uh, Humanitarian and military support now is only specifics before we're fully involved in the conflict with our options just for how we go about backing a side laid up for us. Expect further reports as the presence falls and solidifies. Time to roll the dice. What the heck is going on? Gomez. Ah. Should the front fail? That's not good for us. Huh. Very right, grand grenadine officer to Iberian academics. When selected, new Grenadine military officers become available for a month. New Granada, huh? Run a propaganda campaign, New Granada. Ah. Look at this guy, El Duce. Fascist left wing populism versus social nationalism. Test of tactics. Sure. Sure. No people. Get themselves involved, huh? No? Alright, well, I guess we'll see. Counterinsurgency units. The African SS are taking up our native land. Despite the faults, they make it valuable guerrilla fighters. Since they've grown up, lived, and will likely die on the battlegrounds that make up the area near South Africa, they are intimately comfortable with the land because of their unique heritage. They're like ghosts. The Africans move from the land, strike them high with the native population before the Americans can so much love left a finger. But no longer. Time's come to even the advantage. Oh, spare one. Some of our tornadoes are natural outdoorsmen and have never truly forgotten their old home. For these qualities, some have been approached by the CIA who wish to recruit them for the war effort, and we allow them to can nullify the advantage the Africans have. We codify the council's powers, though. The fundamental law of the organic state gives the Iberian Council numerous powers, including the power to tax, the power to pass laws, and the power to oversee the operations of lower ranking government organizations. It's far greater than any power that the formerly weak council has had in the past, and so it may require some reasonable limitations to keep them in check. The question now facing the Tukat Dios is exactly how much of the de jure powers the council should be able to exercise in practice. Best to minimize the workload. Ooh, more paternalism. I love them all the city powers. Slowly improve, slowly improve. Passively improve. Make reformism stronger. Who need a political power? Os Veritas. I bear sending quite a few Portuguese down to the south of Africa. No matter how many we send, it doesn't seem to be enough. 
Clearly, the mistakes was prioritizing quality over quantity so highly as we have sent barely anyone. Any advantage is quickly nullified by the total lack of people to capitalize on, as it were. We'll be sacrificing a bit of that fine quality for numbers. Do the same work from the Vera Veriatos Volunteer Divisions, originally deployed to Spain into assist Franco many years ago. Many brave Portuguese men will be able to taste the honor of battle. Made all the sweeter by revenge. They will not rest until Angola and Mozambique have been avenged. Determine legal political stances. Yeah. Decision of liberalism. Permit legislative oversight. Providing the council with oversight will allow them to have a wide aspect of information that will be very useful for the job. Oh, there goes Kennedy. Of course, having access to this information will make them also more powerful. What are we going to do about this? Shapiro wins the Germans of a war. An official a news broadcast from the room by now, hopeful Germania was picked up from waiting on waiting our beer and airwaves today. Oh, look at that. About both Cadillo, Salazar, and Franco waiting together for the past few hours for the statement for the Reichstag to finally be announced. I pronounce. Speer, the liberal and idol of Germany's youth, has won the Germans of a war. A huge sigh of relief could almost be heard coming from all freedom-loving peoples around this wretched earth. The Nazi reformer now becoming furious seems a much appreciated shift away from the current dark paradigm that Europe had to suffer for the last 20 years, conquest and economic ruin being its defining hallmarks. In Iberia, this view was shared by the vast majority of the populace. Even both Cadillas could for once agree that this was the best possible outcome of the terrible conflict, an outcome of the future that may not have to be further war and death involved it. The possibility to gain prosperity from trade, bettering of diplomatic relations, and finally the chance for Europe to come closer together. I had a brief celebration and a short meeting with the other senior government officials. Two Cadiz part of ways from now, Salazar are leaving with a secretive yet buoyant grin. If anything went according now, and Shapiro kept his reformist promises, the Iberian Union may become defunct as a necessary measure of unity against external threat. Portugal could become independent again, sovereign again, reigned just by the pragmatists for gaining its lost glory. As the Aegean was almost too perfect to be free of Franco and his split, mismanaged country, whether Shapiro would be able to change Europe's oppressive dark dynamic was yet to be seen, but for once, Salazar could finally entertain the idea of hope. A relief, perhaps. Once an enemy, always an enemy. While the public was so mostly celebrating looking forward to a brighter future, the machinations of the never-resting Iberian state did not relax its view of a peaceful Europe, one without German domination, therefore threat was not yet envisioned, even with Spears' victory. New Big Daddy was still a national socialist, formerly devoted close acolyte of Hitler, one that may be talked sense, but still by a blood of barbaric German. The idea that Iberia can now relax, possibly even devolve, as Salazar hoped for an idealistic future, was uh, not just one rooted in still grotesque reality had... Uh, was reality they had to endure. After initial jubilance, uh, even the Portuguese Cadillac became rooted again, adopting his usual composure in the next council meeting. Invited military and economic analysis began to give their estimates, deriving from close analysis of Germany's net material reality. And Speer's proposed politics of how long it would take Germany to rebuild and what sort of military capabilities the Iberians would need to prepare for in case of uh, worst case scenario. Cadillac Franco, unusually for the aging fighter, was very invested in the meeting and interrupted regularly to ask specific questions on the military matters. Salazar spotted Franco taking charge of the situation in a way he did not appreciate in the slightest, began to make equally valid statements on the political and diplomatic motivation Speer may follow. Trying to reduce the push for further Iberian military expansion as he viewed this as a being unjustified, aggressive move, one that may produce a negative reaction. Underneath this open reasoning, he also was motivated to try to reduce the further integration of the two nations this would create. Surprisingly, the council took Franco's side of the matter. The final decision of the council began to prepare for the worst case possibility to be to better be as safe than sorry. So as I reached, rushed internally, once he left me, let's prepare. Here's from the sky. The streets run red with the blood of innocence as bombs and mortars rain from the sky. Despite American air superiority, the little can be done with the enemy so close by. Civilians in South Africa find themselves inadvertently caught in the crossfire's bloody conflict, and as a result, many begin a casualty of war. In the chaos of the streets, many speak of Portuguese saviors who run through the deadly corridors, rescuing those in need. These stories, while they may be, appear to be fantastical, are in fact grounded in reality. Accounts from across the conflict in South Africa tell Portuguese medics about the Iberian army coming to the aid of those in peril, risking their own lives and living to do so. Hundreds of South Africans claim to have been involved in some way rescued by these medics, operating far outside the scope of their mission in order to provide any assistance possible for the South African populace caught in the zones of conflict. The actions of these men have truly be become the make of legend. Iberia truly is a force for good in the world. Yay! And we're determining legal political stances still. Of course, permit legislative oversight, which I think I read earlier, but proving, providing the council with oversight would allow them to have a wide aspect of information that would be useful for the job. Of course, having access to this information would also make them more powerful. What are we going to do about this? As we have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm at this current moment. Different the legal polit political stances. From the events of the Spanish Civil War and the crisis of Portugal was embroiled in before the Estado Novo, we have ample reason to ban liberal opinions with the Liberian Council. However, as has been pointed out by several advisors, of course, no one this could possibly alienate Opus Dei, which is a promising organization. It's about the wishes of both the Cadillos, it's maybe necessary to liberalize our regime somewhat. In the case of letting some more liberal elements onto the council, we'll have to watch it much more closely due to a subversion, but the benefits could potentially outstrip the expenditure resources. Ban liberalism of any sort that cannot be trusted. Paternalism, huh? De Vacaracel. Let them in by the keeping eye on them. More liberalism. We strengthen by the change of popularity, more conservatism. Restricting the reformist council or reformist sentiment in the council. All right. 
Limit the regional veto. Discourage leftist involvement. Yeah. Now that we have a way for some people to obtain relative power over the nation, we need to make sure that none of them lean the wrong way. We best make sure that no one near the capital uh, should be involved in any leftist groups or even in the slightest ways. Naval maneuvers in the Gulf of Vizcaya. Hello, and Seagull, high up in the pursuit of a white cloud, listen to its primal instincts and go further down to try to spot some of the possible prey. Instead, it was greeted by the unusual sight of a rather large contingent of the Iberian Navy. Both Portuguese and Spanish ships conducting a large scale exercise, a show of strength personally overseen by Cadillo Franco from the shore. The British Spaniard has scared this personal vanity project out of his Portuguese counterpart in the recent debate over the Iberian response towards the victory of the liberal reformer spear in the Germans of war. Salazar, quite fond of this, Navy himself was quickly reorganized the Germans would take little notice of this waste of precious fuel. The attention mainly focused inwards at the moment, any other little foreign policy decision being in regard to their subjects around the world, and therefore granted fellow Cadillo's request without much opposition. He needed Franco grateful. Um, and ready to compromise with them on the more important issues regarding the new diplomatic scene of Europe, but the training also showed him the Portuguese na naval capacity, which he also inspected closely from his comfortable viewing platform of standing next to Franco. It was, after all, vital to rebuild the empire he had lost to the marauding, uh, marauding Teutons, who now seemed to be finally tamed for their destructive nature, a display of strength. Nice. I love the political power. I love it. Uh, the whole Columbia thing here, we're probably going to use consequences for that one. Probably. We'll see. I don't know. Just because America is going to be very strong. Cool. Nothing else there, really. Which is good for us. 60 better engineers. We always use engineers. We all have a blue water navy, you know. We can we can go toe to toe with the American Navy, you know. As Speer is slowly trying to reconquer um, the Unites Pact member nations, so. Which is fine with us. We don't really care about them too much, but we care about them enough to be worried about them. I did notice that Gorky here in Western Europe is actually has its own nation, but they're not actually they don't have unique folks tree yet, which is kinda promising for the future, I'd say. But inflation is looking much better than it did before. Better than it was earlier, because we had over like 7% inflation, but now it's like 6.5, 5.6, I mean. So the deficit's not as bad. Of course, we did lower social expenditures. Growth is even higher than the debt interest now, which is very good. So, um, but we're going to hit our ceiling soon. Making provisions for legislative oversight. Another part of the fundamental law of organic state enables the council to, in theory, request information from organizations such as the military and the governments of Spain and Portugal. Well, this can make the jobs much easier to also empower the council even more, something that both the Cadillas are reasonably worried about. While well, limiting the power to request information is a legitimate option, restricting the council in this matter could severely hamper their ability to effectively perform their duties, potentially causing any more of the lethal intragovernmental conflicts that threaten our union every day. No need to worry them with higher functions. Give them everything they could need. Nice. Uh, ensure uh, system mutability. Regards of how much we limit the power, it would serve as well to allow to a way to ensure the council doesn't get out of hand ever. After all, should they move forward towards something that would put Iberia together? Oh, look at this. Or put Iberia in danger. The Cadiz would have a legal way to shut the whole thing down until order can, of course, be restored. Fortifying the mountains. The Pyrenees Mountains, an immense natural defense on that once split the peninsula from the feared French. Not divided Iberia away from. A Europe ruled by far greater evil. Or so it has seemed, and for anyone watching the sunburnt manual laborers and military men toiling away endlessly, using man's great ingenuity to further expand the large fortifications that line the beautiful mountain range on the southern French border. Again, the Iberian Council had voted for Franco's gruffly made proposal that it had led to constructions. To the deep and bitter chagrin of Salazar, who was getting more impatient with Franco's defensive demands each new meeting. The Spaniards did not run out of ideas, so far the intelligence services had reported nothing that could suggest spirit had untoward, had untoward desires when it came to Iberia and its people. Well, that would change with each new military adventure that Franco departed on was yet to be seen. In all honesty, Salazar was not entirely against the fortress installations being built, yet for different reasons to the Spanish Caudillo. It saw a great threat emanating from the former German puppet of Burgundy, the secretive SS state. Any kind of defense against his ominous threat was a welcome one indeed. He therefore not vetoed this idea either. An impregnable, impregnable fortress indeed. Barcelona or bust. Let's start it down. The police perilously balanced over the inspector's status since the start of the investigation was now being, beginning to swing dangerously. His return to the office had been an awkward affair. The inspector ensured that his time away had not been wasted. He managed to get a thorough profile of the servant. In this, he had finally found a key lead. Uh, the man seemed to know a group of anarchists in Barcelona rather well. Upon his return, his colleagues, some of them friends, watched suspiciously as the inspector paced towards his desk. Shifting a stack of forms away, he could a proper, a clear space. He noticed a small piece of paper which instantly made his blood boil. The case was to be dismissed unless new ideas were procured. So, doing his anger, he began the thought of the servant and idea began to materialize. The lazy sun illuminated the streets of the great Catalonian city. The inspector tracked down the cell to a mediocre family restaurant in the old part of town, entering it worriedly, observed how a giant of a man made his way towards him from the back of the room, towering over the inspector, he asked him for the time. The inspector nervously hunched over to look at his watch instead of accidentally dropping his police badge. Both men looked at the floor and then back at each other. While saying another word, the man hit him square in the face. Only with luck, he was able to escape the brutal beating he had entered in the shop, only to return to disappear, grilling him back at the hospital. Spacing in and out of the meeting, he caught a few snippets of the conversation. A broken protocol, and this time had been more than a step too far. One word he distinctly caught, Albert, fired. 
even though with anesthesia, anesthesia, he managed a weak smile and one last lucid thought. How lucky it was that he had left his files at home. He knew he would redeem himself, of course. Keep in contact. In the ever worsening personal conflict between the two contrasting Cadiz or the official who appear in government policy towards the new right, the traditional statesman and politician Salazar had finally been able to wrangle a significant session out of the aging former general. Drawing upon all the previous plans and projects from the Spanish Cadiz that he had not vetoed, for the sake of an opportunity like this, the old Portuguese uh, convinced the Spaniard that even if the government's policy will allow or follow one caution towards the wobbling European hegemon, we should not allow the Germans to see any aggression in their handling of state affairs. Following another debate, this time more of a monologue as Franco had lost interest, it was said that the diplomacy would be initiated with a new regime in Germania, diplomacy and mutual necessity. In other words, trade into commerce. It would allow a channel of communication and the possibility of crisis. Through this change in policy, it might also be possible to expand the intelligence network that we are still building in the root country to ascertain the direction and, uh, <clears throat> oh, I lost my place, uh, ascertain the direction and working of the German government. But for Salazar, more importantly, it would allow a following of previously further relations between the two European nations, like usual. Franco had not been able to object to the ascetic statesman when he had begun his rant. He saw no real danger pursuing what Salazar proposed but deemed it not useful enough for Iberia. The nation needed a threatening external force to unite against. Looks like he might have to create a new enemy. It is necessary. Hmm. Well, we could try this one. I'm sure it's going to help us re out leftist influence, though. Because the Iberian Council presenting a uh, potential inroad of power from malicious elements, regardless of how small it is, the Council must be carefully watched for mal malignant leftist influence. Officials must be careful, vetted, carefully vetted to ensure no connection to the PCE, CNTIR, or other power diplomatic groups. Additionally, we will ensure that peripheral personnel such as staffers do not have to struggle with ties to left-wing groups. Through these programs, we can reasonably and securely ensure the integrity of the Union and make it immune to leftist aversion, which will remain vigilant always and limit the, the regional veto. The veto is the worst thing in a government by far. It only leaves a bunch of complicated threads spreading across the nation for no reason and results in plenty of good ideas being vetoed. <coughs> should we just limit what the veto can do, or should we make it just leave it and spare the political maze we would need to navigate through to keep everyone satisfied? Minority representation? The Basque, the Catalonians, the Galicians, uh, they move further away from a union every single day. While some of these are more expected in others, uh, this only hurts and more in the end unless we do something. Still a little not good. We, we, slow, we sl slowed it down. Now the growth is not as high. 5.3 is not bad. We're at 100% already, so. 3% um, reduction of base inflation rate. Reducing inflation by 0.8%. I kind of want to do this so we get lower the debt, but still. I don't know if we need the Navy. And I want more stability, too. Test their tactics. Get more army XP. Bribe them. Well, we'll see. Where are we at for this? 36 is not bad. Mostly Salazar. Mostly Franco. Mostly Franco. Fully Salazar. So those guys unify the front. There's nothing else really there though. And we still only get oh, actually yeah, a quarter of political power every day. That's so bad, the virtue of the sea provision. The notion that Iberian Council remains useful to an unreasonable system. That can should create a legal mechanism for the dissolution and refounding of the council. With a potentially compromised council able to be shut down at any time, Iberia should be able to function better than ever before. Of course, to ensure that this system is not abused, we shall require unanimous consent among the Cadillos, and the council should be able to re be reestablished at any time. Good thing to have. Good thing to have. Ooh, ooh, ooh. more growth. A friendly game. So you mean to tell me you've occupied 16 hours a day every day of the week? Asked Salazar's voice soaked in his disbelief. No, started Franco, only to be cut off mid-sense by his compatriot. Then why can't you? You would drag my butt through half the legislation on the planet, but you would not humor me with a game of chess? I don't want to play chess, Salazar. I have better things to do with my time. Like what? Gathering dust? Really? Just one game? We shut up about it, asked Franco. It has been two days of the trade. If you oblige me just once, then I will. Oh, Franco sighed. Let us find a time then. Sounds like me at work. Fine. Okay. Master doing in quiet, huh? After the end. Oh. There goes Kazakh Dan. What's Bull Gary up to? Botus the third. Resting sword of Damocles. King of Rubies without shine. Empire's new crown now grave. And this roots are radical. Like in the separatists. One of the many issues plaguing the Iberian Union are separatists in minority regions. Uh, Basque terrorists are sabotaging rural construction in the Catalans, are complaining about being neglected by the government. Even in Galicia, there are some who consider that abandoning what they see as a failing union. If nothing is done to quell the separatist sentiment, the union will face even more problems. One option that has been considered is increased encouragement of the acceptance of the Spanish identity in the problematic regions. Another option is allow for limited self government, overseen by the people of Hamburg by Caduio Franco. No Catalonia, Basque, or Galicia, there's only Spain. Illusion of power might keep them placated. Yeah. Public legislature. We're finally done and we created something to fix our disorganized government. No longer will we get stuck in legislative or veto hack. 
but instead we'll actually have a system that will hopefully sort uh, everything out efficiently to a long and prosperous future through Cheers for Iberia. Legislative situation, re legislative situation resolved? More stability would be nice, though. Let's go with this. There's priority. Man, this malaise. Can we, can we work on this malaise? I don't like it. I don't like malaise. But I do like this coffee I have here. Hmm, yummy. Yeah, you can be like just there you go. Hey, RFK! Congrats, RFK! Congrats! The minute to the regional veto? One of the most destructive systems within Iberia. As allowance of Spain or Portugal to vote the other nations' domestic affairs, we could possibly limit the Iberian Council's ability to do this with significant political expenditure. However, it's almost certain to anger Salazar would make use of the perception of Spanish dominance within the Union. If this is performed, a campaign to reassure Portugal that the federal government represents all of Iberia and not just Spain will be required. Of course, the three of the veto situation is ridiculous. Talking about with Portugal, we don't need it. Well, at least the admin efficiency is improving because we have a deficient administration, even though it's going to take forever to get there to the hard one. Sondagarisht. Very chat typical. Yeah, this getting up here would be way better. Oh my god. Ah, Dilthango Brigade. What a fun nation to play as. De military professionals will monthly gain plus 2%. Or plus 0.2. Well, it's basically 2%. Well, not really, but whatever. You probably understood. 39? Not bad. Not bad. Alright, Papa Legislature. Let's see what else we have next. <clears throat> legislative legislation, uh, legislative situation resolved at the lengthy period of time, new fundamental law alterations, and compromises not seen since the original founding of the founding of Iberian Union. The Iberian Council has finally been established as a limited legislative body for all of Iberia. Under the strict supervision of the Cadillos, the Council is hoped to be part of the situation, solution to Iberia's many administrative woes. The first session of the Iberian Council shall occur eminently. With the intent to address the situation in Germany, Iberian domestic issues, and the situation regarding Portugal's lost colonies in the East, a more to a more productive future. Nice. Political power, stability. Awesome. Look at that. We're extremely stable. Because we're My god, we're going to need that. Because I know things are going to hit the fan soon. The Iber Co Council convenes. Quiet voices fill the chambers. Councils took the seats for the first time. Hundreds of Iberia's most powerful, influential, and educated figures have assembled in Madrid for the inauguration of the Iberian Council. The curtains at the back of the chamber pulled back to reveal the Cadillo standing behind him. Uh, Frau Inco and Salazar enter the chamber to a rousing cheers. They sat in two chairs on either side of the podium, each embroidered with a coat of arms of their respective nations. A few seconds passed in the near silence, with Alejandro Rodriguez de Valcarcel uh, emerged from behind the curtains to take the stand. The assembled officials, ministers, and soldiers, peoples of Iberia began by the joint mandate of Cadillo Franco and Cadillo Salazar. I, Alejandro Rodriguez de Valcarcel, am honored to call to order the first session of the Council of the Iberian Union. A lot of cheers filled not only the palace chamber, but the residences across the peninsula as men, women, and children watched and listened to the heavy publicized proceedings live on TV and radio. Baracasel, praising him for his success in preserving peace, civilian security over the past couple, a few years. At the same time, he acknowledged the problems that he had come to plague Iberia political, Iberia, political gridlock, a slowing economy, and rising tensions. The council of Baracasel, Valcarcel explained had been designed by the ingenious Cadillos specifically to solve these problems, to foster a greater sense of Iberian brotherhood, and to give the common people a greater voice in their governance. Franco still ever diligent in perfecting the management of Iberia's economy and its government institutions. Salazar are valiantly taken to work to protect Iberia from the foreign threats following the callous betrayal of Iberia's supposed Italian and Turkish allies. Valcarcel himself was to be the president of the council, tasked with organizing and conducting the proceedings, serving as the primary representative of the Cadillos. The speech would last only for around 20 minutes, but it would be ingrained in the collective consciousness for the, of the Iberian people for years to come. A new era of uh, Iberian politics has begun. A council of promises. Oh. Nothing here, huh? Happy March now. Happy March. This game lags are harder than TNO. So, like... So conservative. So 39. King of England. Ah. Uh, so now what? Maybe I need to reload the save. Sometimes that does happen. So I think I'll end the episode here and see what happens in the next one as Columbia is going to explode in the next in the next episode. So if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll figure out what else we can do with Iberian Union and hopefully start really working on the economy. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.